Hello and welcome to the debrief. I'm your co-host. My name is Seth Ressler. And I'm Becky Scarcello. All right, Becky, you know that I like drinking beer. Mm-hmm. As do I. And I like biking. As do I. This and is something that we can yes, they, both uh, agree on. This is one of the few things that we can agree <laughs> we on. We love, yes, And there, there is something that I have seen since I first got to Detroit, and I have to admit, I haven't done it yet, and I'm dying test, to do test. it. You've done this, right? Yes, a couple times. You've been on the handlebar. These, yes. these pedal pubs that go around, you see them around downtown, mm-hmm. groups of people just drinking and having got fun. Got the big old keg on it. I yep. interviewed uh, Evrod Kasimi of uh, WDIV, of, mm-hmm. of Channel 4, and asked him what was next on his Detroit to-do list. Like, yeah, what did he want to do? Yeah. yeah, and this is what he said. And I, I was like, know. dude, you are so right. That's yeah. what I want to do. Well, uh, we're very excited because we have on the show today, Brian Lindsay of Handlebar, Detroit's original pedal pub. So we're going to find out what goes into basically drinking and biking. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome, Brian. Welcome to the yeah, podcast. cool. Thanks, guys. That's that's quite the intro. Yeah, uh, dude. I'm I'm all about. I mean, I remember seeing it early on. I was like, that's awesome. Well, I you, never. You see these, and you're like, those people are having fun. Like they're having a good time. So I gotta ask, what is the story behind it? Did you see this somewhere else, and then bring it to Detroit? Is yep, it exactly that... exactly what you just said is kind of what me and my brother did. I mean, we saw one um, actually in Milwaukee in 2000. I think in 2011. And uh, Stephen, my brother, texted me a picture of it and was like, we're doing this. And uh, I was like, absolutely, I'm in. Or I think I said, like, dude, I, dude I'm in. Right. Um, did he think then, you meant start a company or did you just thought no, you No, no, start a, a company. So oh. the, the backstory is like our parents are entrepreneurs. And uh, even though we're not, we're both went to college to become engineers. We kind of always wanted to be a little bit, but just didn't kind of unstable career. And um <laughs> we always had bad ideas, a lot of bad ideas, or mm-hmm. we'd think it something would be cool, then we'd Google it and it existed or something like that. Right. Oh, wait, I so, want to hear some of the bad ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> what didn't work out? If, if the pedal pub made it, <laughs> I mean, what didn't? The pedal pub was the best idea, but like, you know, it's just like you're drinking and you think, oh, what if there was a way to do, I don't know. I, if I say an idea, it, would, it just it's not even <laughs> pedal pilot. Good. Nope, that <laughs> one doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, we text each other about like things we should do, right? Um, mm-hmm. Because we were both kind of getting sick of corporate America and stuff, and it would be a fun way to get out and try something different. So no, it was definitely like we should start a business. Um, and where and were then, you living at the time, you and your brother? Yeah, I was in Ann Arbor, um, and my brother was down in Indianapolis working at Rolls Royce. So I was at Toyota. Okay. He was at Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce, sorry, and. Um, yeah, the next weekend I went to Milwaukee um, and uh, saw it and was like, this is pretty sweet. Um, yeah. And then three months later, we had a, after a lot of disagreements and arguing how we can get it going and whatever. I mean, it's a pretty simple thing, but um, never starting a business before was a lot of discussions and, and whatnot. So um, three months later or something like that, I think we had a bike. You know, What are the challenges? I mean, can you buy a pedal pub off the rack or do you have to have them custom built? Yeah, so, okay, the pedal pub, okay, who came up with this idea? Um, it was a couple guys, Hank and Zvier Van Lahr, over in Amsterdam in Europe. So the, it's been going on there for 20 years. Um, and that's kind of what ended up happening was these guys, okay, so there's this uh, King's Day parade, which is a huge parade in Amsterdam, just a big party. Um, and the the two guys, like, uh, one of them is a, a welder, and his friend owns a bar. And he's like, dude, I want to be in this parade. Why don't you weld me up a bicycle bar? Oh. Because in Amsterdam... The bicycle is like massive. If you guys ever been there, I oh, mean, yes. it's like there's it like a million bicycles. Insane. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So everything's bikes, bikes, Everything. bikes. Everything. Right. Yeah. So he's like, okay, I can weld something up. So he weld this crazy contraption. Um, and then, mm. long story short, people are like, dude, I want to ride that on the weekend. And he's like, okay, you want to rent it from me or what? And then it obviously that turned into a real business. They started making them better and better and better. But mm-hmm. um, our our bikes are or pedal pubs are from those guys. They hand build them. Uh, we haven't shipped them over. Ship them over on a boat. Wow! Wow! Yep. So they basically protect, you know, the cities that we're in. So they they wouldn't sell to a competitor in Detroit. Um, oh, yeah. so, so it's market exclusive. Yeah. So oh. like we're ca- we call our bike the handlebar. You know, we think that's a cool name. Yeah. Um, but the bike itself is a, the manufacturer, like a Ford or a Chrysler or a Toyota or whatever. It's Het Fitz Cafe. So oh, it's okay. a Dutch word. Het means the Fitz is a bicycle and Cafe is a pub. So the bike pub. But ah. presumably other. 
bike pub manufacturers have popped up over the years. Yeah, right. So people saw it like, whoa, what's this? This is pretty cool. We should build these ourselves um, because they wouldn't sell to anybody else. So we do have two new competitors in Detroit that came in after us. Does Um, Elon Musk know about this? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right? Because I feel like... He, he, he might want to get in on the action. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, if, if you talk to him and, and he wants to buy us out. <laughs> I was going to you know, say, know. collab. So how many do yeah. you own at this point? So we have 10 pedal pubs in Detroit, eight in Indianapolis, um, four in Toledo, Ohio. And then um, my brother and one of our Aussie drivers started it over in Australia, and they've got uh, six over there. Wow. wow. So, okay. yep. The handlebar's grown. Yeah. Do you yeah, plan pretty, to expand other cities as well? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah, right now it's kind of like uh, I quit my job last year as an engineer. Oh. So it's like. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah thank that you. had to feel good. Yeah. Thank you. Huge step. Um, it's got to feel it was, scary at first. Oh, dude. It, I feel like such a wimp because, you know, I talked to all the other entrepreneurs and they're like, oh, yeah, I just jumped off. Bought right. A, brought a brick no, and mortar. You did it the right way. Bought a brick yeah. and mortar and blah, blah, blah. And they're like my parents. Like right. they opened a furniture store in Ludington, Michigan. It's like, how'd you guys move from Detroit to Ludington, Michigan to start furniture? Like that's crazy risk. For me, I had insurance, you know, a good business going. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, well, you know, might as well just. Right. Yeah. So it was. <laughs> yeah. That seems smart. Maybe I'm not giving myself enough credit, but it. Yeah. You wouldn't have been on the Mayflower. You would have been like the, the 16th, 17th ship, ship that came over. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. right now. So I was, I was more than ready to leave. I mean, I was doing part-time. I did four days a week, then three days a week. And then oh. it was like, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. Now, are these uh, vehicles on the road uh, all year round, or do you have to take? Yes and no. I mean, um, we operate basically March through November. Um, That's we don't, early in the year. We don't do a ton in March. You know, it's like St. Patrick's Day is a huge yeah, day. Yeah, sure. Thanks, or, sorry, not Thanksgiving, but in um, November, you'll get people that want to tailgate or something like that. Mm-hmm. But the busy season is like April, May through September. What's your busiest day of the year? Well, all Saturdays. <laughs> yeah, I that think that sounds like equal. That sounds like a kind of an arrogant right, but there, answer. But there but isn't but no one event that like... No, and it's kind of counterproductive. It's kind of counterintuitive. Like people will say, wow, the Super Bowl is in Indianapolis. You guys must have been so busy. And it's like, well, not really. When there's a huge event, people want to go to that event. Right. So whether they can do the 2 o'clock tour or the 4 o'clock or the 6 o'clock, they don't really care. It's whatever's open. Right. Whereas mm-hmm. if there's a huge event, you may center around that. No one mm-hmm. wants to miss it to be on a pedal pub. Um I don't yeah. know. That, so what's the secret if you're telling people how to kind of structure what their experience would be on the handlebar? You mean what do I tell a customer? It's like yeah. I want to do one? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, you know, primarily I don't have to tell people to pub crawl. They get that part of mm-hmm. it. Um, it's a bring your own alcohol thing, which is pretty cool um, because, you know, things can get expensive. And it's yeah. nice to supplement what you're doing with some some store-bought stuff versus bar. but. Um, you know, part of the biggest thing I think that people don't realize that they always tell us after the tour is Detroit's awesome. I got to see so many cool things. Um, and I'm not just saying they do it. It's a two hour tour and they get to see all kinds of new stuff in Detroit. We're kind of piggybacking on, you know, the, everything that's going on in Detroit, because even people who say they know Detroit, they don't. I mean, they come down and go, what's that bar? What's that restaurant? What's going to be that building or what's, you know, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that is a part of it that they, um, you know, they get out of it. And, I always remember Jason Hall saying, like, you know, there's no better way to see the city on a bicycle. Correct. We yeah. are kind of that way because people are going five miles an hour. <laughs> you're like, you're like, I'll see your bicycle and I'll raise you beer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, when you're, right? Yeah. When you're on your bike, it's like you you have a little bit more freedom. But when you're on this, you're you're not steering, you're not braking, you're just listening to music, pedaling, and you can't help but look around. Right. You're only going five miles an hour, um, and so you get to you get to see some cool stuff. So, so mm-hmm. talk about some of the routes that you go on. So we have two, we start in two locations. We one of our or eight of our bikes start in um, Greektown behind Old Shillelagh, um, and then two of them start up in uh, at Detroit Shipping Company, just three blocks north of the LCA. Uh, but pretty much we we can cover all of downtown from both areas um, in the two hour tour. So for example, you know people people that come on the tour are like first they think the bar is the main thing. Which 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 bar are we going to go to? I don't want to know. I want to talk about which bar. There's so many bars. Actually, it's more about the route, we find. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get to see Spirit of Detroit, Comeric Park, Ford Field, Campus Martius, um, you know, all through, all up and down Woodward, Capitol Park. You can see all that in two hours. 
So, um, and if some people are like, you know, hey, I, I did the downtown one, I want to do um, Eastern Market, I want to do Corktown, we can do that too. Um, for the most part, though, people are like, they just want to be around their friends, cut loose, let us take them around, get a couple of pictures, you know, and have a good time. Um, but I don't know if that answers your question. We can go anywhere, though. Right. Um, yeah, downtown. you can customize. Yeah, and yeah. the Detroit Shipping Company, those spots, like if people want to go north and hit Midtown, you know, hit hit Jolly Pumpkin or, or go north at a Hopcat or Honest John's or whatever, um, we can do that, too. And that's so. relatively new, right, that you added the shipping company? Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yeah. yep. It's this year we just added uh, two at Shipping Co., which that bar is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the owners are just super cool, but, like, um, people pull up there and they're like, what are, what are we doing here? Shipping company? What is that? And it's, I don't know if you guys have been there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Many yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. But a lot of people are coming in from the suburbs right. and they don't, they don't know, or they may be heard, but they didn't know. Um, it was like three, like five star food truck style restaurants. Nepalese inside. dumplings coming just, in. I just like saying just Nepalese dumplings. Last yeah. Week. Yeah. 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 So. So. yeah. And there's a bar, it's a patio, there's live music yes. and it's huge. That's part of the pedal pub thing is, you know, we drop off at a bar we were the bar and us were in a relationship, right? right. We want to make sure that the bar gives good service and that we send them somewhere that's it's going to be a good fit. So, like for example, if we're sending them to a tiny hallway bar, it might be cool for me to pop in there and get a drink. Could be one of my favorite bars, but to drop sixteen and push them in there on a consistent basis, mm-hmm. it might be not a good fit. So, shipping company is a great fit for that. Um, which, yeah, I, I don't. We don't take money from bars, by the way. Um, definitely they tried to give us money. Um, <laughs> but That's such I wish a people problem. tried to give us money. Yeah, yeah it's a problem all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, it's that, yeah, it makes me sound stupid. Like I'm, I'm an idiot businessman, but, um, <laughs> it keeps a good relationship. Yeah. You know? Right. Yes. Right. Um, our, we've just heard things, both our, both our competitors do that. And for us, it's like, if we don't get bad service, we're out. Right. If our customers don't want to go somewhere, we don't go there. Right. If this group seems like they want to go, I mean, we had a group go to San Morello. I think yesterday. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. Okay, like we'll go there. I mean, we'll go anywhere you want to go. Uh-huh. Our drivers all know the city pretty well. Um, and if they don't know, then we'll take you where we think is cool. But, right, right. Um, yeah. So talk about your drivers, like how you train people and who they are and what, what their background is. That's probably the most important part of the business. Yeah, um, I would think so. And they they probably think that I'm just blowing smoke. You know, you guys are the most important, but they really are. Um, mm-hmm. And if you read the reviews and stuff, it's usually – the tour was awesome. Detroit's awesome. And my driver, Nick, was great. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, whatever, whoever the driver was, they think that's the best person. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the training, that's also probably the toughest part. Um, because, you know, you got to find the right personality. You know, somebody who's chill but can still be like, yo, you cannot do that. Yeah. Sit down in your seat. You know, you can't hang from the roof. You can't stand on the bench. But in a cool, fun way. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> No, that is, we being talk a tour about guide it, myself, that is a tough uh, line to We talk about it on. all yeah. the time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the guys who have been with us for a while, they're like, it's like they're just so good at it. I don't even have to worry about it. And then the new guys get there, you know. Um, it's not a career position for most people. Yeah. Um, so you get we get some turnover and stuff like that. But the guys that have been doing it, I mean, honestly, like, I don't know what they'd say about me, but they're like my friends. You know, it's who I hang out with the most these days. So um, when I got drinks with with a bunch of them uh, last Saturday. So, I, yeah, it's the most important part of the business for sure. Can you talk about as you were setting this up in the city of Detroit, what were the hurdles, especially bureaucratic or, or legal, legal hurdles that yeah. you had to go through to make this happen? Yeah. I probably should say it was super easy <laughs> and the city was awesome and it was great. I know that's um, not true. Well, right. Okay. So my thing is always individually, each person that we met with was awesome. They were like, oh, this is a great idea. You know, we didn't run into anybody saying, like, you can't do that. But we ran into a lot of, you know, well, I don't know about that. Uh, you might need a license for that. Okay, well, you know, you're the licensing department, so yeah. what do we do? Like, yeah. how do we go? No one was really, like, understanding of what to do. And there was a lot. It's a big city. There's a ton of things going on. Are we a priority? Not really. So we're knocking on the door and stuff and going around and making the rounds at Coleman Young Building and a um, lot of that, a lot of that before we finally got, you know, going. Did so, they have to invent a license for you or? Um, well, what they ended up doing was they considered us a pedicab, 
Okay. Which is like those bikes right. with the people on the back. So yeah. we knew a couple of owners from that and they were like, they were help. Like, like I said, everybody was actually really helpful. Like the pedicab guys were very helpful in the beginning. We're like, who, guys, who, who'd you talk to? What are we doing here? We're, we're scrambling. Um, and so they call us a pedicab in the city. That's our license through the city. Um, and things have changed over the last like four years of exactly what that is. But essentially... Um, Do you have a liquor license as well? No, yeah. no, no, no liquor license. So the state, so what happened was the state passed a law in July of, uh, excuse me, July of 2015. Um, Snyder signed a law, Senate Bill 165, and it was, you know, basically a thing saying what these are, or a bill saying what these are. They're called quadricycles in the state of Michigan. You can have alcohol oh, on them. Okay, you can have yeah. a, a small, oh, go ahead. And what I was going to say, is that because of you and because of the pressure you were putting um, on? Maybe indirectly, okay. but we weren't like knocking on Snyder's door. They d- they knew. Okay, so we were in Indy, and we had definitely put the feelers out in Michigan to fix because we want honestly like we're Michigan boys. We yeah. wanted to do Detroit, um, but it was too big of a hurdle to try and get through to figure out if it would work. And we were just trying to see if we liked the concept of pedal pubs. Try right. it out. Yeah. yeah, and in Indy, it was totally legal because. You can drink on the street in Indianapolis. Yeah. I don't know mm-hmm. if people know that, but you can just pop a beer and walk down the street. Like New it. Orleans. Yes. Right? Yeah, there's a few cities yes. open in so tax. We, yeah. And they're kind of like the good old boys down there. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like, mm-hmm. guys, this is cool. Right. You know, and that's <laughs> right. not really what it was. That's a simplified <laughs> version, but right. it was very, very laid back in looking back on it. Right. Right, right. Not yeah, at look, the time. But, looking yeah. back on it based on what we had to deal with in Detroit, it was a lot less of that. So. Um, not really directly, but they knew that it was coming, and so they were a little bit proactive about it. Um, I think Snyder was. Um, nice. Huh. nice, yeah. 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 Pretty cool, huh? I, I so want to – I need to go. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes, we just – let me know, man. After this, we'll get you on tour for sure. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I would love to. You've got something coming up with the Detroit Cycling Championship. Yeah. yeah. Talk yeah. about that. Yeah, so um, the Detroit Athletic Club – is um, putting on a race. Well, they've done it for years called the um, Detroit Cycling Championship. And for a couple of years, we were knocking on their door, pitching them on a, an idea to do a handlebar race. Um, and this year they bid on it and they're like, all right, let's, let's make it happen. So um, it's basically... It's basically a bike race, so but the handlebar per- version of it is almost like a halftime show. Uh, we're going to take bikes and race them, drag race them down Grand River um, in front of Beacon Park. And uh, we've got a few bars racing against each other and some DAC members and there's some prizes. Um, I don't know. I don't remember all the bars that are officially. I know Founders is in, um, Atwater's in, I think Second Best is in, uh, the Brakeman, the Shinola mm-hmm. uh, bar there. Uh, and there's a few others that are, are I don't know if that, what, which ones are official, but um, yeah, it's just going to be a fun thing, kind of like a March Madness style bracket, um, single elimination Something like said, kind of like a halftime show. That's um, awesome. Yeah, and anybody can go see that. So it'll be a good time. Yeah, we've done it in Indianapolis. We do it for the Indy 500 um, races, and it's it started out as just a handlebar thing. Now it's a week long event centered around this like handlebar hot lap race, <laughs> um, and it's pretty cool, man. Like everybody comes out, Colts, Pacers, all kinds of celebrities and stuff. So. Maybe one day we'll get get to that level. Yeah, yeah we'll get yeah. to that level. That's the dream, maybe. All right, yeah. here's my question: Can I hire you? Because I want to go do slow roll, and I want to have the coolest bike of anybody in slow roll. Can we you have help to talk to that? slow. We've done it before. <laughs> you yeah, have? for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. What have we, you done with them in the past? So back in 2015, our first slow roll was actually this is when I met Jason Hall, who he's a friend of mine now. But um, the piss we did with the Pistons. Um, so the players got on the bike. And uh, we were set to do the slow roll, and then somebody in management was like, he looked at the beer tap and was like, mm. and then the cheerleaders rode. So oh. it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> even all, better. I, I, I yes, yeah. yeah. that's what yeah. I want. <laughs> yeah, and I can say actually, I'm friends with one of the girls I met on that ride still. So yeah, um, yeah it was nice. a win, I think. Anyway, but <laughs> we did it with the Pistons, kind of cruising through. Um, slow roll. We've done it a couple times since then. It's not a it's not a great fit because the slow rolls are like eight miles long, right? Or right. more. So you can do like the first mile and then it's like, uh, uh, let's head to a bar. Yeah, right. Yeah. Let's take <laughs> yeah. a left here. Yeah, but it is cool. It is cool to be in it because I mean, there's just, just so many bikes. You know, high yeah, five and stuff. Out yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Barbecues. Oh, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Brian. Uh, we're gonna play a little game. Are you ready? Sure. 
Here we go. We're going to ask you for a series of rapid-fire recommendations. Just tell us the first thing that uh, comes to mind. Uh, starting with this, we had Evrod uh, Kasimi of uh, WDIV Channel 4 uh, on the podcast, and he said that uh, going on the handlebar was next on his Detroit to-do list. So what is next on your Detroit to-do list? Yeah, you know what? I walk and drive by all the time. To me, like, it's going to sound probably sound cliche, but I just want to go hang out at, like, the Campus Marshes Beach Bar and mm-hmm. enjoy a drink and not and watch Handlebar go by without <laughs> having to, like, actually actually work. <laughs> Laugh or at the feel, guys who are working. Yeah, or feel stressed <laughs> yeah. out. I'm watching a driver. Right. I always get jealous of all the people that are, like, enjoying the outdoor bars and stuff downtown. Mm-hmm. That's not a great answer, but that's I, probably honest. I understand honest. that. I yeah. understand. Yeah. So if you had a time machine, which moment in Detroit history would you like to go back to and experience? Oh, man. Um, This probably means, well, yeah, just for me, I guess it would probably be my grandpa was a Detroit cop. Um, So was my dad, but um, he was in the bomb squad. And he always used to tell me stories about what he was doing back Mm -hmm. then. And to be honest, I never cared. Um, Well, yeah, when you're a kid. Yeah, you're a kid and stuff. And then also because I didn't have that Detroit connection. So... Um, now I think, man, if I would only paid attention to all those stories you told me about the streets and all that, because my mom, I, I've been into it now more with my mom and dad about stuff, but um, I think it would just be going back to seeing what my grandpa was up to in the bomb squad days. Like, they've got some crazy stories, you know. I can um, imagine. Yeah. Do you have a favorite place to see a concert in the Detroit area? Hmm. Probably Beacon Park. I know that sounds weird, but not at um, all. It's great. Yeah. So yeah. last year, Quinn ninety two. Yeah. He did a concert at Beacon Park, and it that. was live. Yeah. And like, I didn't actually get to go to it. I mm. was doing Handlebar. We went. We we were. I was riding my bicycle by it, and I was like, man, that's a sweet concert. Actually, the next day, Quinn went on a tour with us. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. So that was even cooler. But um, just the way that that castle's lit up and stuff. That's super unique. Oh, the Gar you know, building. The light you've show. Seen, you've seen this, right? Uh-uh, oh, Minefield have... does this light show on the Gar building. It is insane. It's really? fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, would that be better than, you know, LCA? Probably like pyrotechnics wise, stuff like that. Not even close, but very unique. Mm-hmm. I thought that, I think that area is super cool. Outdoors, you know? yeah. Yeah. Okay, how about this? What Detroit celebrities would be on your dream guest list for the handlebar? Um, Man, it'd be really cool to have. It sounds cliche to say Eminem, but he would be pretty sweet. Um, or like Seeger. Is Seeger Ann Arbor or he's Detroit? He's Detroit. He's okay, Detroit, went yeah. to Pioneer though, but okay. So yeah. probably – We'll uh, accept He has it. a street okay. named after him in Allen Park. Right, so. yes. I would say probably Eminem, because, but that sounds so cliche. That's okay. And so he's Seeger, cool. but they're just like – Eminem's awesome sober musicians. now though. That's true. Yeah. Ooh, he that could would have be a buzzkill, wouldn't it? Yeah. or something. We'd get yeah. him a wingman water or something. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, I think it'd be cool. Maybe that'd be better that he's sober. Yes. And you can actually talk to him. Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you, when you're not pedaling, what are you drinking? Is there a Michigan beer that you particularly like? Uh, you know, I'm I'm pretty laid back, man. I like Atwater. Um, I try to drink Atwater just because it's a good Detroit beer. Bells is awesome. Anything. Um, there's really not a beer you can't put in front of me that I'm like <laughs> not into. That makes me sound well, like well, that's true for me too. But how that, come your stomach doesn't look like my stomach? Because he rides a bike every day. <laughs> that's yeah. probably that makes me sound like an alcoholic. But by the way, I'm also into White Claw. <laughs> oh oh like yes, big White Claw yeah. guy. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. no laws when you're drinking claws. Baby. <laughs> Do you have a favorite outdoor festival in town? Um. I think movement – for Detroit, I mean, I think movement's pretty sweet. Um, it's just cool. It's such a unique venue to be on the water like mm-hmm. that, you know? I mean, Shane Park's – I've been to concerts at Shane Park, and those are awesome, but they're just not quite the view that you get with movement. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the yeah. pictures that you see don't even give it justice. Yeah, it is pretty sweet. You know? But, yeah, that that and Shane Park, we, we, got, we have such an amazing waterfront. Like, mm-hmm. very few cities butt right up to the water like that. Um, yeah, to think we didn't used to use it. But, but there's right. a lot, you know, I used to live in Providence, and Providence had the same problem, which is that Not they were using. on the waterfront and they didn't use I mean, I literally lived across the street from a Dunkin' Donuts that the back of it was facing the waterfront. Yeah, I, I used to park on the waterfront when I worked at the Rensen. Right. Parking so, lot. Well, the Bay Area, you got the, the stadium. Yeah. 
That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So there are some places that are using it well. And I think a lot of cities are rediscovering yeah. the waterfront. And, awesome now. Yeah. And uh, starting to use it. Uh, it's, tell me this. When you go to the other uh, uh, cities that you're in, you know, Indianapolis and so on and so forth, what is the thing about Detroit that you brag to your out of friend, uh, out of town friends about? Um, so basically all the cool things happening in the city, um, people are really proud of Detroit. I think you would say that about any city, anybody who's from any city, they're proud of it, but Detroit has so many things happening. You know, um, when we do a tour, you can take them so many different directions, so many different, by so many different things, get so many awesome pictures and, um, in some of the other cities, they're still cool. You know, Indy's an awesome city, but it's already developed. It's not done, but you know what I mean? Like Detroit has so much more potential, I feel like. You're circling the same three blocks over and over, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it, you have to go down there. It's Everybody's got their unique thing. But for me, I'm definitely more proud of Detroit. I just think because there's so much, so much happening. It's such a huge city. You know, I mean, Indianapolis is a million people. Detroit's 4.5 million. Yeah. Metro. You yeah, know, yeah. four times. That's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. And, and there's always something new. Well, so people suburb- could do your tour and come back the next two weeks and, they and do. see something different. Yeah, yeah, and they do. Right. Mm-hmm. Even if they just go buy it. And then after the tour, they're mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm go check that out after the tour. You know. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Thank you so much, Brian Lindsay of Handlebar. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, this was great. This was I, I really enjoyed the story because I've I've just seen these things forever and I've been like, what? what nice is to know the, the background. story. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's get you on a tour. I'm in. I'm yeah. in. Right. We'll uh, we'll make that happen. We'll do a debrief tour. Get some listeners to yeah. go with us. We can do a. You know, we've done those before. Podcasts mm-hmm. on the bike. We oh should. my gosh! Do that. Let. We yeah. should make that happen. Yeah. And for everybody else, if they want to, uh, you know, book a, a bike, how do they do that? Yeah. Handlebardetroit.com. And can they? follow you on social media as well oh yeah instagram follow us on instagram for sure um like all our stuff good content yeah great I'm great follower. content yes. yeah <laughs> really good i do yes. it all so that was kind of a joke but uh, yeah <laughs> well it, it, it's it's awesome what, what's yeah. the handle uh sorry at handlebar detroit easy and remember. you book up in far in advance, so people need to get on it if they we want do. a date. Yeah. We do book up. You know, people. I always tell people, they say, well, how long before do I have to book? If you know your date, book Just it. Just book it. Yep. Yeah. You can cancel two weeks before, book it, because people say, oh, my friends, we wanted to go, and you had it, and now it's gone. You know, it's like, sorry, you know, it's live. It's and live. how many people fit on a bike? 16, and we've got 10 of them, so you can bring uh, up to 160 people. Yep. Wow. wow. I need some more friends. Every two hours. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All yeah. right. Well, Brian Lindsay of Handlebar, thank you so much. Uh, until next time, Detroit's moving. Keep up. The D Brief. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene.